black cherry wild berry. All right, here we go. Welcome back to Mind of Micah. It is episode 18, right, True? Yeah. Where my tambourines go? That's what I'm missing. Why would? Can you grab it for me? Hold on, y'all. No, I'm keeping this like this, but. Stop playing with me, because we need two. It's, yeah. <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. Here we go. Yay. Episode 18. <laughs> and this podcast is all about relationships, mindset, family, spirituality, and so much more. And my guest today is a beautiful woman. I met her uh, a couple weeks ago at the Lair Fashion Show. And let me just say, I got stuck to her. Like, let me go. Mm, okay. <laughs> I see. I see. Please welcome Coco Vaughn. Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. How you feel? Child, I'm nervous. I don't. Why are you nervous? No, I feel good. I feel good. I do. I feel okay. great. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you You're so glowing. Thank, I try. You know. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It got hot today. All of a sudden, I was yeah. cold all day at work. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Got in the car. Like. <laughs> Then that's when the nerves hit. That's when I was like, oh, I got things to do when yes. I leave here today. Yes, and you're slain as you do them. Thank you. All right. On the podcast, Coco Vaughn, our first question is always, are you fully living in your truth? Like, everything you want, you are, like, making sure you get to it. The people you want around you in your circle, what you don't want around you, are you living in your truth? Are you halfway there? Are you, like, I'm sort of kind of? I feel like I'm a good 90% there. Mm. Okay. I like that. The 90%. There. Okay. 90%. Well, what's the other 10? I'm still trying to figure it out, mm. but I'm not rushing it. It all, all the colors will show themselves soon. So yeah. we'll see. I love it. So for those who don't know who you are, your Instagram is coco.von, right? Yes. You are, well, give me your title. Um, as far as your work, and I'm, I'm gonna say an influencer, but you are more than that. So, um, let the people know who are tuning in right now who Coco Vaughn is. So, outside of being a plus size influencer, I always add the plus size. Okay. Because it's very important. Yes. There's a lot of us, but there ain't that many that mm. can really do it and get it done. So, on top of that, I pl- I'm a plus size model as well. So, we actually met at the He Loves Curves fashion show. Last year? hosted that. At the, um, uh, that I want to say that. Oh, that was, uh, in 21. Was mm-hmm. that 21? With, uh, yep. Sharika, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, uh, what else? I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for nine years. Wow. I'm a mom. Oh, that's really about it. Friend. All that stuff. Yeah. But really, mom, nurse, influencer. What is mom life like for Coco Vine? <sighs> So, to be honest, mm-hmm. I am getting to know my children now more than ever. Um, when I first got pregnant, I didn't have the opportunity to really just be a full hands-on mom. I was maybe a stay-at-home mom for just like two years, and then I went into nursing school, and it was just like constant for me, constant school. Then you're finally working. When you're a nurse, you have to rotate your shifts, and... I worked night shift, so I was really sleep all day to work all night, and I kind of was, like, always in passing with my family. Mm. So I only had a few days with them, but now I feel like that's why I'm 90% there. A year ago, two years ago, I would have said maybe 50%, but now, I like, it's slowly getting to that 100% where I can feel like I'm living and thriving. But I'm just getting to really know them, their personalities, and... Not like I not not want to say like I haven't been around them, mm-hmm. but it's just I'm really finding out how they've changed from being little babies, going to games, doing the things that they want to do. It's just dope to really have that chance now that I have a nine to five type job to where I can be home and cook dinner. They love when I cook things like that. So that's my question next. Like what what curved it for you to be able to get that time with your kids? But you said job yeah. nine to five now. So yeah, uh, left the bedside. Hands on, because those 12 hour shifts, <laughs> they are no joke. Yeah. They are not. And you think, oh, you got plenty of time. No, you don't. Yeah. You, did work, you think you have work at three, you work, excuse me, you work three 12 hour shifts, but that's not the reality of the situation. Bills got to get paid. I'm working mm-hmm. extra shifts. I'm trying to work extra shifts 
for my dreams. I want to be an influencer. I want to be a plus size model. I got to be able to afford that. That doesn't tap into mm. my normal income. Like mm. I had to work extra for that. So I had to sacrifice a lot of that family time to yeah. build, to get where I am today. Yeah. So you said you're a plus size model and plus size influencer. Um, did it just come to you one day to try out, like to, to be a model and influencer? Or was it like, let me just put something on and go for it or did you always want this I've always wanted I felt like somehow some way in life I was supposed to be in entertainment one way or another well I'm too big to be on TV let producers and all that stuff say it so with social media it just opened up a different platform where you could just really go for it so I moved in silence I didn't tell a single person what I was doing oh I didn't want nobody to talk me out of it I love it so I literally told all my friends I want to go to Miami for my birthday. Now, this was like six years ago. I want to go to Miami, and I just want to celebrate this new chapter. They're like, this, you act like you're turning like 40 or something. Like, what is this new chapter? And when I got down there, that's when I let them know, like, hey, I want to start pursuing modeling. I want to start. There was no influence at that time, but more of the plus-size modeling stuff. And they were like, oh, you know, that's pretty cool. What made you get into this? I always felt like that was a step in the right direction. I was like, I don't see a lot of it. I don't see a lot of plus size models mm. at that time, but now, I mean, of course, the culture dynamics have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I don't know. But social media also gave me a like a false sense of you can do it because all you saw was like the success part of it. Mm. So I was like to answer that, like, oh yeah, we about to be a plus size model. We can do this. Cause everybody else mm. is doing it. No. So I got a rude awakening that year of my first time stepping into that field it was just like oh this is not how this works okay let me try again what was one of the rude awakenings because I'm pretty sure like we always see the glamour but behind the scenes is like it's a whole bunch of layers to like this 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 it was a lot of no's a lot of you know I'm not tall enough uh, my face is not slim enough uh, I have my stomach is too big mm -hmm. you might have a look but you might not be able to fit the particular clothes because they do have standard a standard plus size woman is to them a size 10 12 in reality plus size women are a size 16 18 20 22 mm. is what plus size is really considered in the real world yes so it was a lot of no's a lot of money that i put out there i didn't even know photographers videographers so i mean hair makeup it was just racking up I was spending thousands mm. to get where I felt nowhere but it does pay off cause yeah I must say it when I look back at it I'm like I might have felt like that yeah. but I see that I needed to go through all of that so so overall it was worth it it is worth it okay would you change anything about it would you like go back and like this I would do differently or this I would do differently or would you keep it all the same I would actually keep it all the same because those were the lessons that I learned. So now I, I can gauge these mistakes. Mm. Like, okay, I'm going to risk it all. Yeah. But <laughs> this is what's going to happen if I do that. I'm, am I okay with the lesson? I don't want to call it a failure. But am I going to be okay if it doesn't work out? So, but I would absolutely do it all over again. Where did Coco Vaughn's confidence come from? Because you, it's all over you. It's all over you. So I want to know where does that... Is it spiritual? Is it, um, you know, spoken affirmations? Where does it come from? I always say confidence is in you. It's not on you. Um, if you want to be confident, you have to work on everything on the inside. Mm -hmm. We can look the part all we want to, but I actually, before I even started this journey and went to Miami, I saw a therapist and I was able to heal from a lot of the trauma that kept me feeling like I wasn't good enough. Mm. And it was actually that I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so fat. Oh, my God, I hate my skin. Oh, my God. Then my kids would actually be like, oh, look at my face. Oh, look at my body. And I'm like, you know what? I got to figure out something here. So I actually was able to I sought therapy, and that was probably the best thing ever because it did help me. When I say it's in you, I had to heal from the inside out slowly peeled back those layers and then I was able to just walk in my truth like all right you want to be a model you want to be an influencer I'm not going to lose weight overnight I'm not going to be 
America's Next Top Model in a week. Mm. So in this moment, I'm going to live in my truth and be confident in who I am until it changes. And I haven't changed. I probably gained weight more. Here's <laughs> 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 to living in your truth regardless. Living in your truth. <laughs> so it just, I slowly just went from there and it, I haven't shifted from that. It's every day. This is who I am. This yeah. is what the world is going to get. Like it or not. So enjoy it. And if you don't like it, you can block. You can remove yourself. Yes. You can remove you all down the road. <laughs> I don't care. Jump off a bridge. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sorry. How has that impacted your children? Your confidence? Does it make them more confident? Does it make them? They are so supportive. It's the crazy. Mm -hmm. I have the best family ever. I love it. From my husband to my kids. They absolutely. I couldn't ask for better children when it comes to this. Because I already missed everything from working. Now yeah. I'm missing more stuff from trying to model. And instead of them being like, you're not here. They're like, oh, when's your show? Or can we come? Or can I go with you? Most of the time they can't come. Yeah. But you can come to the fashion show. Their confidence. My daughter is like a little fashionista. She lets me style her. Yeah. Like she is with all. I don't know if we can swear or not. You could cuss. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She 12, she with the shit. So I, you know, she gets with it. my son. He's like, oh, where are you going today? Whose show you have today? Yeah, like, But yeah. in, not in a bad way, just like, all right, well, when you come back, can you bring me some McDonald's? Yes! Like, you know, like, it's not, I don't have to get the hassle. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. I love it. Okay. So um, this glow, living your truth is clearly the glow. Does it have, because you're married, you have a husband. Yeah. So does uh, living in your truth tied to Coco Vaughn because you know we once had all have a past living more righteous or um are you on a righteous path of a living or are you just still figuring things out I feel like every day is a different journey for me I can't say that it's righteous or it's perfect mm -hmm. it's just I literally wake up and I'm like thank you lord okay Mm -hmm. Whatever you need me to do today, I'm going to do it. I'm like, I, I feel like I apply that theory to everything. Like, I go to work, I don't complain. I need to go to work. Mm -hmm. I'm at work. So when I wake up, I'm here. I'm not about to complain. What do you need me to do today to fulfill my purpose? It's more so I ask, what, who needs something from me? Because I don't have no problem giving. Giving, I feel like that's why I'm also a nurse. So I feel like that's what helps me stay on that path of righteousness in a sense because I feel like I'm here to serve and any not just looks <laughs> okay look in all aspects of everything that I do so can I say it's a hundred percent no I still feel like I'm, I'm still sitting at 90 yeah I'm okay with that and that's a, it's, it's not a, I think I, I had said on the radio the other day that people need to try to live more righteous yeah. um it was a comment that one of my brothers had made he said the reason why people are broke is because they live a sinful life. If you stop sinning, you can probably like, you know, get some blessings to come your direction. And so, um, what I was trying to pretty much get at, do you think, what do you think about that, that comment? It's not that, how? Because it's like more so God can't bless no mess, right? Like he gave us commitments to stand by. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Not to well, steal, not to kill. Yes, yes, um, yes. Not to destroy, not to fornicate. Um, being a drunkard, like some things you just have to abide by. And therefore, I'm going to just say in my own testimony, when I was, I'm going to say in the streets, when I was pimping, when I was, you know, I had them niggas and I was good at pimping. Amazingly, I could write a book. <laughs> I want to hear this story. A play, it is so many. It. But I just can't name drop because, you oh, know, Lord. NDA is was signed. Okay, madam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So when I was living that kind of life, right, um, it was, you know, a little dark. It wasn't a little, it was dark as ever. I never had really peace. Um, I always had money, always had the men, the looks, the clothes, what I wanted, the car, whatever. Um, but I always was very drained. I was always drained, always depleted, could never get, you know, um, replenished. And was like, every time I try to go this route, I would hit a wall. Yeah. Always like, boom. And I was, and I told God, I said, I enjoy doing this. This is what I like. I'm, I'm good at it. I'm, I'm fucking fantastic at it. I'm like the coldest with my mouthpiece. Like, 
I know I'm dangerous because I have a gift of gab. I can't help it. And so always hitting the wall, always hitting boom, boom, next person, boom, this, boom, this, boom. It's like, what do you want? Like, I'm trying to pray to you and understand. So again, with my sister situation that happened with her, that made me switch my whole way of thinking and living. And so I was like, um, let me just try to live righteous a little bit, right? Because we're not perfect. I'm not. But I am trying to do my best to not sin, to not commit fornication, to not be a drunk, to not, um, you know, think bad thoughts. Or I've never hurt people. It's not my thing. Right. I'm a giver, too. I, I'm a healer, and I'm, I'm naturally, like, a good person. But it was like, let me just try to stop, you know, doing certain things. When I say it hasn't been easy, but I have way more blessings, I'm never drained. I've had the people that's for me come around me and, and support me and comfort me. It's like, okay, like, this is... Gotcha. This works like nothing else worked. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like when he said people are broken without, you know, is because they live a sinful life. And I look back at where I was at. I was like, whoa, it may have some truth. I think it's truth in that. I mean, it just depends on how you're sinning. Mm -hmm. You're like, you're not going to be perfect. So you can't walk around here. Perfect. Yes. Like, yes. That's impossible. Yes. So where that statement is true, it's not because. Yeah. I'm listen. I'm can say you shouldn't talk about people i i damn sure gossip so i can't sit here and say that yes i'm married so i but i'm not an adulterer mm -hmm. so like those things in the sense of uh i'm a hard worker i'm not lazy i do drink mm -hmm. but are you is, drunk is, am i drunk or mm -hmm. am i being like am i drinking to hide or mm -hmm. Drinking to wash something away. Yeah, yeah. No, it, for me, listen, I could get, got 10,000 followers. I bought me a whole bottle of Santa yeah. Margarita. I'm celebrating. That's, yes, yes. Now, is that righteous? No, but I bet you if I stop drinking, I'll lose that weight. But so those are the, so mm. it, where it's true, it's just at the same Like time. pros and cons. You have to watch that because you, you're not going to be perfect. No. So then if you think if, if you're trying to walk in this way, as you're saying, or as he was saying, and you mess up, well, then now what happens? Get back. How, how are you going to, it's not even about getting back, mm. but how are you going to take it when you mess up? Yeah. And so people have to look at that like, so don't play it too close to that line. Mm. You just remember you're not perfect. And I think it's too like us being accountable, right? Because yeah. once you know better, you do better. So it's like now that I know, you know what I mean? Because I have my, our plates are, are, are full, right? Yeah. So now that I know I have this dependent upon me and this dependent upon me, it's like, let me just say where I'm at. You know, it's, um, what's the path? The narrow path that we're supposed to be on, but you get Straight detoured. Narrow. Yes, you get detoured like, this look good. I want to go play. I want to go ride a ride. It's like, yay. It's like crash and burn. It's like, no. So, yeah, we're going to mess up. I'm going to hit my head. I told God, I said, because, I, again, I, I enjoyed that lifestyle I had. Yeah. But I've always never felt fulfilled, whereas me being a mother, um, me being a nurturer, now I'm feeling way more fulfilled. It's a lot of work. And even this is, like, very stressful and overwhelming. And I have to find and ask God for grace and favor because it's just so much that I'm carrying. But I know if I go back to that life, there's nothing there but more devastation, disappointments, yeah. failures, the wrong people. So it's like, I can't go back. So let me at least try to go this way. Granted, I may go left and right, but I'm still pushing to go You're going this right. way because... Now that I understand the question, because I'm a little slow. No, don't. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> See? You look, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. See? So, my, I've had the longest fight with God, probably my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. So, technically, I'm not even supposed to be here. So, my mother wanted to get an abortion. My uncle said, no, don't do that. So, now I'm here. Mm -hmm. So, we get this far in life. You know, you go through all your trauma through your childhood. You get here. You make it through. So now I'm like, I want to follow these dreams and do this. Now my fight with becoming righteous or staying on that righteous path is with God. Like, why would you let me come this far? So to what you're saying, okay, how can I readjust? So I want to say for maybe the last three years, my prayers have been selfish. Um, they've been really geared to and focused to what I want to do for my future, who I want to, who I want to be, who I need and who and how I can move forward. But like, I don't know what to get rid of. So 
am I supposed to do here, do this? So now I'm going left mm. to what you're saying. Now I'm over here going right. How do I, what do you need from me? So when I wake up, that's what I ask. What do you need from me today so that I can fulfill your end of the deal? Because yes. in order for you to keep figuring out, it's not going to be perfect. So yes. for me, I can only still, I'm probably going to knock myself down about 80%. Stop. Stop. Which is okay. You know, we'll get back together later. But it's just when I think about it, like that fight I've had with him, like, why are you letting me, like, what is it? What do I need to do? I had to focus. I had to cut out. It was really like, you know, you get on the phone. I was reading something the other day. You get on the phone. The first thing you want to do is get on the phone and call somebody and tell them all your business and tell them your frustrations. I stopped doing that. So I get on the phone with God. I get on the main line. And I'm like, hey, you know, what do I need to do to figure the, like, I always say, what do I, like, that's probably, I should change, I should hashtag that, make that a shirt, Lord, what do I need to do? Yes. Because it's just, if I'm talking to him, now I can get a clear answer. I cut out a lot of things over the past few years, like, I would be upset, like, not networking. That was my biggest fear. So I wouldn't go out to places because nobody would want to go with me. Mm. And God was like, you're the only child. Go go outside. You know how to make it work. And I would refuse to do this. So lately I've been getting the courage to go out and network more. And even over the last year or so, I was like, I want brand deals. How am I going to get brand deals? Who do I need to cut out? How do I need to cut this out? I was getting distracted with the wrong things. So once I kind of honed down, sat down and said, okay, you can go outside. You have to create your content. You're going to have to... Create your content before you go outside. You can't, your friends aren't always going to come. No one's going to always record. Get all your stuff done. Then we can get going, get to moving. And that actually worked. So January 2022, I was like, I am going to bust my butt for the whole year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut out. If nobody wants to go, oh, well, I'm still going to go. If people don't want to do this, oh, well, I'm going to still do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, whatever. 2023, January, my birthday. I got my first brand deal with Fashion Nova. Wow. And I was like, I know you lied. I'm looking in the phone like, bitch, what is this? Yeah. So it was just like, I was like, okay, fine. I don't got to worry about nobody else. Yeah. I stopped complaining. I stopped trying to involve others into, these are my dreams. See? These are my goals. Now, how can I keep doing this? So it was just brand deal after brand deal, pretty little thing. Uh... Sheehan, mm. Reb Dolls, mm. it just was back to back, Lancome, it was just, I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, Urban Decay, Kiehl's, I mean, I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. and this, we're not even in May yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, now I'm here today, I'm like, wow, like, yeah. look at him, look at him, okay. I have to, yeah, <laughs> and letting God will work out in our life because it's so long we want things our way yeah you know we set our goals when I say I had goals lined up for this year and all of them got swept like nope you do this yeah. and then I'd be like why I did not ask for this I and to this it's, day, it's I'm not like, always what you want this. it's not always what you want it's gonna be what you need mm. when it's time mm. and not your time his time and I say that all the time it don't I'm God's going to continue to bless you. Does, it does, don't think he knows that we're sinners. Yeah, he yeah. knows we're not going to always stay on that righteous path, but he's not going to ever forsake you. Yeah. That's just his word. He, he stands on that. Yeah. So by knowing this, just continue to do you. He, child, he, he is nowhere. a just and a fair God because I'd be like, you know, I've, I've, I've lived a life. I have yeah. lived a life. When I say I was, my dad always be like, he was a great sinner. I was like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was the coldest, like, yeah, hey, can't nobody see me. Like, man, but I be looking back like I came a long way yeah. and I still have a ways to go. And it's just like, um, what's the word? Like in the midst of the going and the transitioning mm -hmm. is like, that's the hard part. Yeah. It's like, you know, you I'm comfortable with what I, I knew. Cause I, I I was so good at it, and I was like, this this is new to me. Like trying to do this is like, it's different. Cause you yeah. put your foot. If it's hot, it's like ah, too much work. It's all struggle. I'm gonna be a little broke. I don't like that. Like ah. So, um, but I will say I'm trying to keep my eyes on 
the bigger picture at the end. If yeah. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Because, like, I have no idea what it's up to anymore. So I'm just like, just let him do his thing. But you got to keep working harder. So even though he's going to keep blessing you to what I was getting too far, I forgot, yeah. child. It's okay. <laughs> you have to work harder. So, and I say that all the time. God is working hard, but I still have to work harder. Yeah. I still have to keep going. I Just because I have those brand deals, just because I'm going to different types of events and having whatever passes, that doesn't mean anything. Because at, at the same time, I'm going to events where there's drinking, where there's secular music, where my clothing is not always appropriate, but he hasn't forgot about me. He hasn't, he, There's nothing that says, okay, now, you know, I mean, there is something that's called the Bible, <laughs> but <laughs> there's nothing really like going to stop you yeah. from truly fulfilling your goals and your dreams where he's, I mean, I'm not stealing. I'm not robbing, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not killing anybody for this. I'm not stepping on anybody to where I have to go. So as long as I just keep staying in my lane, yeah. I know he's right on the passenger. Actually, he driving, <laughs> I'm on the passenger side. Let him drive. We gonna crash. We gotta play a game now. <laughs> What's in the boat? Oh, <laughs> <woo! laughs> <laughs> I wasn't fucking ready. <laughs> I thought you were gonna have some fun. So, Coco Vaughn in the box may be oh, a yeah. gift for you. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, your hair. Right, there you go. It could be a gift. It could be um, what all the ways is a gift for you. So um, is something gonna jump out of the box? I can't tell you that. Lord have mercy. <laughs> we can't tell it, can we? <laughs> and Reese put it in there, so whatever he put in there is what's gonna Producer. gonna get you. Oh man. Okay, so reach your hand in there. You gotta grab it. Uh oh. Do I have to close my eyes? Go ahead, close your eyes. Oh lord. <laughs> It's paper. Yes, grab it. Okay. Okay, what does it say? Woo! In honor of football season, tell the story of when you fumbled a guy. Ooh. Reese, here's the Reese. Woo! <laughs> the producer. Listen, I, like you, have the gift of gab. I don't fumble anything. Mm. It's touchdowns over here. <laughs> okay. Call me Aaron Rodgers. Is he the quarterback? Yeah. Is he the good one? He, he the Packers, right? So oh. oh. Well, yeah, know. name a good one. Deshaun Watson. <laughs> <laughs> he is a good quarterback. I can't say. I Well, I haven't. So who has fumbled you? Tell us a story about when you were fumbled. Mm. Somebody had the bag and was like, messed it up. Damn. Listen, I okay. First of all, I've been married for twelve years, wow. so I don't. My stories of dating are like college. I had long term relationships, so I wouldn't even. I can't even say you fumbled me. We were you just grow apart. I don't. I don't have a good fumble story. I, like I don't even. I like apart. You know, I yeah. I can't say I have a. I had a high school boyfriend, you just naturally you just break up like it's not Yeah. I don't have a fumble story. My husband, he wants to live. So he How did he bag you? Child. He got me pregnant. No. <laughs> 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 um that oh, child. Oh, it was a Floyd Mayweather fight. We was it was at a bar in Cleveland Heights, Platinum Dreams. Oh man, I was the place. Look at true. But, yeah. You know, you know. And they had security, so on the little CCTV I saw, I was like, oh, damn, he fine. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, damn, he fine. Who is that? And I, when he took his hat off, it looked like he had, like, patches in his head. I said, he is too grown to be walking around here with some damn patches in his head. Wait till he walked past me, because I'm going to be like, sir, what happened to you? Yeah, you. Yeah. When you got, what, why do we still have hair at this point of time? Mm -hmm. He's walking past. I was like, damn, he is fine. My friend said, she's like, that is my brother. And I was like, well, is he single? And I normally don't, I don't like when my friends date my family members. And I was like, do you mind if I like talk to him? And I'm an aggressive person. Mm -hmm. So all of my relationships, I have always approached the, the man. You're dominant. Uh, yeah, I don't, it does not bother me. I'm like, the worst thing you're going to say is no. But 
even that had never happened at that point because people would be so shocked that you would even approach them. So he went to the back. I walked over. I was like, I'm Chloe. I didn't go by Coco then. And then uh, I said, what are you drinking? He's like, we tried to get some drinks, but ain't nothing. I can't get a drink. It's so crowded. I said, I'll be right back. I walked my ass right behind the bar, got him an MGD. No, you Because I, I swear to God, walked my ass back around and gave him his beer. Chloe, you know what? <laughs> that was it. And then you got pregnant. And then literally <laughs> that, that was in May. I was pregnant by September. <laughs> but, but now here's where things change. Okay. I put him on a 90 day rule. So when no I, sex? no sex. So when we met, first I didn't even give him the address to my actual house. He met me at my auntie's house. He can never come inside. We sat on the porch. We always went to a date like that had an activity. We never had like little small things. So we always went to like Dave and Buster's or, you know, something to just keep the night going yeah. where we could talk. Um, this is when he's drinking, he's sober now. So we would, you know, they used to have those over-unders. We used to take our little, even in our drunkest moments, I still never crossed that line. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. I would, I would have to say when we ended up having sex, I probably got pregnant right then and there. Mm. So during, if we're talking about football season, I was having sex at the, while the Browns was on TV. And that's how I fumbled my <laughs> uterus with a child that I love to death. I love you, son. <laughs> but you weren't supposed to be there at that particular time. So when but, did the marriage happen? After the Well, look at I got I didn't get married till after I had my daughter. So that's two kids later. Okay. Now the Bible say you should do it the other way. Mm -hmm. But I did it the opposite way. Okay. And it had then turned around I had another kid. I'm like, okay, so we two kids in. We're going to go ahead. She was a baby. Got married January. We got married like halfway between our birthdays. He's a December, um, January. He's a Sagittarius. You're a what? No. An Aquarius. I'm crazy. I'm insane. So he had to put up with a lot. Oh, mm. Bless this man's heart. Mm. Mm. You made his head hurt? Child, his head still hurt. But bless his heart. He's a good guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's strong. What's up with other? Yes. Good. Bless your heart. So what are your thoughts on, you said you gave him a 90-day rule. What are your thoughts on, i seen a comment about smashing somebody on the first night of meeting them. Oh, you could do that. I've done that before. <laughs> and then it's still working out. <laughs> I've done that in transition between relationships. I've had my free time. My, I, I don't, I'm not against anything. If you want to have sex on the first night, please Get out the way, see what you're getting yourself into. Do not get pregnant. Do not get pregnant. But figure it out. Do you think that sex plays a big part um, for marriage? Does it? Do you think? Because I heard Faith Evans say she she has had a man that has a big penis. Sorry, a big uh, you know. I forgot there was a kid. Yeah, quiet. There's a producer. So do you think it's a big, you know, sex is a big, big part of marriage? It has to be like this fire chemistry. You couldn't just be, you know. So I'm going to answer this question, but I don't want anybody to take it like it's in my relationship. Okay. Sex is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Sex has never been a deal breaker for me. Um, should you be good at it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No matter what your shape or size or whatever, I've dated a guy that it that wasn't large, but... I mean, we had a good time. There was other things that we were able to do, but you have to be open-minded to that. You can't be a stickler to just whatever. Being married, all marriages are different. You have to know who you're marrying, and you have, like, things just don't change because you got married. If you were having sex all the time before you got married, you're probably still going to have sex all the time after you got married. If you don't, then you need to sit down and reevaluate re what's really happening. In my particular relationship, I will say sex is not the forefront because our schedules are crazy. So when I'm working night shift, he's sleeping. I'm sleeping during the day. Like this was when now we're passing. It's one day out of the week. That's it. And you better hope I'm not on my cycle. So have yourself a good day. Some men don't care about that. I've dated somebody that was like that too. Running it's okay. <laughs> hey. But for most marriages, like, my friends that are getting married, 
They love that. They love having sex all the time, so they have sex all the time. I would feel like that would keep going for them, but every relationship has that pause, that up and down, that I don't think it's, I, I personally don't think it's the forefront, but I understand yeah. those who do think that sex yeah. is very important to how they feel about each other. But some, for me, sometimes it's like, did you wash the dishes? Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily have to have sex. I'll give you a good push. I'm on with my life. I'm over it. Like, listen, take it or so leave it. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. either, but you gotta be good at it. So yeah. if you wanna knock that out really quick, just go get you some Listerine. Yeah. Gargle really good. Let even swallow it a little bit. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, put a little Vaseline on your lips, put it on a little inside. I'm talking about three minutes and we done. It takes nothing. It's effortless. If you know how to give it good, it's effortless. It's, trust me, learn how to do that. You will get so much further in life. I think so too. I agree with that. I think a it man loves a good book. Every time. In the morning, for to go to work, huh? Bye, honey. Quick, Bye. fast. <laughs> I'm telling you, if that's it, I'm an advocate. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. That's the the quickest way to show appreciation. Because yeah. um, sometimes sex takes a lot. It, some people are they just require so much. Mm. You want yes, you want to have that intimacy. You want to have to have that foreplay. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that I don't do that, but it's not a necessity all of the time. Yeah. I rather just. I'm sometimes I'm too busy. I don't have time for this. So listen. You about to come home. I'm about to give you a BJ. I got to run out to this event. It takes nothing to touch up a little lipstick. I don't know what Beyonce was talking about with makeup and mascara. Ain't nothing running, honey, because it doesn't take that long. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it. The mic off. Did it die on me? Sorry, y'all. Why you do that? Wait. <laughs> Dang. My next question was, uh, it was about a... It don't take that long, but what about like um, foot rubbing? Are you into that with your husband? No. Servicing him in other ways as he serves you? No. Is it equally for the man and woman to serve each other? Or is it where you give your husband more than he gives you? Um, now, if he was here, okay, I can't speak for him. So I don't, I don't something, that's one thing about marriage it's hard to speak on a marriage from one perspective. Mm. So because he's not here, it's hard to really answer those questions. I'm sure he would say, oh, she doesn't do enough. And I would be like, oh, you don't do enough. It would be a totally different dynamic. So to sit here and be like, ah, oh, could it be even in a sense of, no. Does he do more for me? Absolutely. I will not deny him of that. Wow. He absolutely does. And probably every aspect. Yeah. It is now where it's shifting because of my change of employment. Yes. Where we can be equal in a sense. So it's not just acts of service or words of affirmation. Mm. The love languages, they are important. Yes, 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 yes. But do I live by those? No. No. I make up my own shit. I'm crazy. Yeah. So I don't care what he says. You keep about. saying I'm crazy. I'm insane. I don't think so. I'm insane. I... <laughs> am the most craziest human being i my thoughts are everywhere all the time mm -hmm. i have no problem being confrontational which he is some i feel like i got that from him so okay. that's the that's the messed up part that's the horrible part but no and he, he's always like you're not gonna ever do anything i will kill you and leave no and, and we it will just we will figure no. out the pieces later no words are so, powerful no cool, cool. not no. like that okay in other ways but in the sense of not in death yeah but in okay like, don't play with me yeah 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 i agree you don't want to go tell me stuff. it no. was a saying that was like uh when i'm and this is my probably my last question but um it was a saying that was like uh when a man ejaculates out of a woman, the sperm becomes attached to her brain and she begins to act like the man. Because they were saying how men can go into different women and it wouldn't matter because he's a man, he can pull out and wipe the penis off and don't care, but the woman is the one that receives. And because she receives, she also becomes a part and tied to that man. So in a sense, aside from the rings, she becomes married to the man when she sleeps with him and he comes inside of her. I've never Do you act that. like your husband? No. Because he's calm. Mm -hmm. He's 
sane and he thinks clearly he's not emotional um, I'm not emotional either that's I can't even say that that's where we are the same because we're not we don't react out of emotion. Okay. So we're very critical thinkers in the sense of, okay, well, why are we fighting? Yeah, we yeah. barely fight, one. So when we fight, it's explosive because it's like we never. Yeah. I, I don't. I, so you don't act like him at all in any way? Has any part of him attached to you at the 12 years? Not like that, no. Okay. I think mannerisms, not his mannerism. He's very educated. So I can't say the mannerisms, but I would absolutely say his knowledge. So where what I love about him is that he doesn't judge me for not knowing. OK, so if there's something I can ask him anything, he has absolutely no problem giving me the answer or telling me where I can find it so I can get my own appreciation yeah. and understanding of it. So he I can say he's a great teacher in that sense, like. I love it. But to, I can't say, I, would, I mean, sometimes I could maybe say some things like he would say, but not really. We are really two, just two individuals that just happened to have a baby and got married after the second one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is God like the head of y'all marriage? Is he somewhere in there? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, originally, we were going to have like a huge wedding. And I was like, this is so crazy. How are we going to like, this is not even important. We are literally, his friend had told him, you know, you are just having this wedding so we can eat dinner. Yeah. And he was like, I was going to talk to you about it and just see if, you know, I don't think God would matter either way how we actually got married. We could go downtown or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And I was like, you're right, but I don't want to do that. So it was a no. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay maybe we just scale back a little bit and he's like okay I go to the doctors because I had uh, gallstones mm -hmm. really bad and I thought I was having an inflammation of it or whatever and it was time to get it removed so they're doing an ultrasound of it and they for whatever reason he ended up doing my whole stomach because my stomach was not swollen but just oddly like in a certain spot a little bit bigger yeah and come to find out, I was pregnant. Yeah. I was four months pregnant with my, and I found out I was a girl that day. Uh, called him on the phone. I said, oh, I guess we're having that smaller wedding you were talking about. <laughs> he was like, what? I said, I'm pregnant. He thought I was lying. <laughs> we go to Fridays, and I just dropped the ultrasound picture. I made them take so many pictures because I couldn't believe. I said, I'm in the middle of this wedding, and now I'm pregnant. I was on uh, birth control and all that stuff. That uh, had a Nuva ring fell right in the toilet, I'm assuming. Mm. I'm like, okay, great. So we got married in his mom's living room. My yeah. dad could not find his nice shoes, so he walked me down the aisle <laughs> in socks. Okay. In the living room. I like it. They paid $50 for this wedding. We served DiGiorno pizza. Yes. And box wine. Yes. And a giant eagle cake. Okay. So. I love it. Because it's more about the marriage than it is about the wedding. Yeah. And I like more tribal things anyway. So that sounds yeah. to me like at home, comfortable. We yeah. wanted our marriage. The wedding can wait. We do bigger when we do bigger. Yeah. So, yeah. What's next for you, Coco Vaughn? Everything. Okay. Everything. I plan on being able to go on brand trips, being taken a little bit more seriously as an influencer mm -hmm. here. Um in my own city. I don't feel like I got to move to LA or Atlanta or New mm -hmm. York to be successful. I can fly to all those places. I, you know, Cleveland just gets a bad rap for everything. Yeah. But I want to be able to succeed here in my own city and be taken a little bit more serious. Like people see, they're like, oh my God, you're so, you might follow me on social media, but I'm more than just getting dressed. Yeah. You know, I can do so much more. And so right now I'm just going to be working on getting in the right rooms with the right people and building my connections and network and seeing where that takes me. I'm not picky. I just want, I know what God's doing. I love it. I, I, I will trust him on this one. So what's the word of encouragement you have for people who are watching right now? Like a dose of dope to bless them, to inspire them or to lift them up if they're tuned in right now? I think it's important for you to love yourself no matter what I, it sounds so selfish but in this journey to grow 
you have got to be selfish with your time, with your energy, mm. with your space, with whatever. It's okay to say no. And it's okay to say yes. And it's okay to just do it. Just do it. Do it at your own time, your own pace. Don't let anybody talk you out of anything because you're not going to tell them. So don't tell nobody nothing. Okay. But loving yourself and understanding who you are today is you are going to change, but you're not going to change overnight. So you got to love yourself right now. Mm. If you don't love yourself with who you are, when you look in the mirror every day that you wake up, there's no way you're going to be able to go out and face the world. Mm. And you see so many women that are like that, you know, they're happy they're whatever and then behind closed doors is a mess yes so if you can take that time to pick and choose yourself first no matter what it could be so simple as just going to go get your nails done that's it yeah sometimes that's all it takes like i can't go the kids need this they need that the kids will be all <laughs> right okay so i'm gonna go get my nails done i'm gonna give me a pedicure yes i'm gonna order another round of clothing and then the mimosa. Love, I'm upgraded to the mimosa. So I'm going to go give me a lemon drop. Okay. And leave me alone. It'll be fine. <laughs> Put yourself first. Love yourself. Mm. And just remember everything that you have and who you are and your confidence is really in you. It's not on you. I love it. Episode 18, Coco Vaughn. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, we'll catch you later. Black chairs, wild baby, baby, you the bomb. I can spin it on you, blow it on you, baby.